Hello, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing, my black people? How you doing, my black people? Lift it up. I want to talk to y'all about the Biden plan for black America. I want to talk to y'all about the wealth gap in America and uh, about the false conception that we have made progress since the Civil Rights Movement. So, <clears throat> that's a falsehood, in my opinion. What I consider to be progress would be uh, economic ownership, uh, economic inclusion. Uh, I would, I would, could, I would say uh, political inclusion, um, uh, political power. Uh, we have none of those things, and uh, I just want to show y'all an example of that. Now, the Washington, the Washington Post did an article says the black white wealth economic divide is as wide as it was in 1968 <clears throat> 14 characteristics show how deep the economic gap is and how little it has changed in the decades since the civil rights uh now, we went backwards since the Civil Rights Movement. Now, it says uh, the COVID recession hitting black families and black business owners far, far harder than whites. In many ways, the gap between finances of the blacks and whites is still as large in 2020 as was in 1968. Now, understand they said that black Listen what they said now. That it hit blacks far harder than it hit whites hit black businesses. Let me let me let me show you something right here. This is according to uh the Biden plan. Approximately four percent of small business owners are African Americans. Let me see what, what we got out of there. See uh See what percentage, of, I'm going to show you what percentage of the uh, corona money we was, we was given. Ninety percent of African American owned businesses are estimated to be shut out of the initial relief program due to pre-existing systematic disparities in lending. So, ninety percent of African American owned businesses were shut out of the COVID relief plan. Right? So our condition is not accidental. It is not accidental. And us having more hardship financially and not being able to weather economically this COVID situation is created. This is something the government, Europeans, this is a system that they placed upon us and that comes from us leaving ourselves dependent on these Europeans. So, uh, now it says, so we was hit harder because the whites, based on the on corona, economic recession, forced us to stay at home, hurt businesses, but 90% of black businesses who have already been economically discriminated against did not get access to the corona, to the, to the money for the corona. Now, but you gave it to the big business, big white businesses. But black people, that's why y'all need to step up and start support y'all businesses in y'all community. In many ways, between in many ways, the gap between the finances of blacks and whites is still as large in 2020 as was in 1968 when a run of landmark civil rights legislation culminating in the Fair Housing Act and sparked after centuries of unequal treatment of African Americans in nearly every part of society and business. The decades since, white wealth has soared. White wealth has soared since segregation ended, and while black wealth has stagnated, Pointing out the large share of whites, millionaires, 
they're then blacks. But even amongst the middle class, the inequalities are stark. Whites will surge. Black wealth stagnated. 50000 in 1960 was the medium income wealth for white families. Black families was zero in 60. In, okay, uh, in 2010, 10, uh, less white wealth in, 20, in, in 2010 is $149,703 per medium household. That's what the average is out to in 2016, while black wealth is $13,024. Household his six thousand six hundred and seventy four dollars in wealth compared to seventy thousand and seventy eight for median white household that is the value of his household right right now that is the value that is the wealth that average equity that an average black has in their household right now they say one in seven white homes. Are millionaires compared to one in 50 white black families. Okay. Uh, in recent years, for which data is available, you would have to combine the net worth of 11.5 blacks families, households, to get the net worth of a typical white U.S. household. Everybody knows that people of color are in an incredible economic disadvantage, except for people of color. Everybody knows that black people are at a significant economic disadvantage, except for black people, it seems. Except for black people, when you try to compare another black business to a white Fortune 500 company like Walmart. See, you forget about your economic disadvantage your racial disadvantage is placed upon you when you shopping with your own people, your own people selling goods. It's crazy. Everybody else understand our condition, can write articles about it, but we won't combat it. You suffer from racism, but you won't even scratch the shit. You won't kick back, you won't scratch, you won't say, let me buy black today. Let me support a black business today. Then I want to say uh, this too. I want to say this too. Uh, I want to say this too. Another thing, our home ownership rate is decreasing since segregation. So when you say we improve or doing better in America, how? Where? Understand this. Uh, since the Great Recession, the gap between the black and white home ownership weight in the United States has increased to its highest in level in 50 years. From 28.1% in 2010 to 30.1% on 2017. 71.9% of white home, home white families home, have home ownership in 2017, representing 0.7 point decline since 2010, and a and a 41.8% black home ownerships represented. A 2.7% decline. So, in the same time period, they had a 0 0.7 from 7, 2017 to 2010. They had a 0.7% house decline, home ownership decline, and we had a 2.7% uh, home, home ownership decline. 
but we only own 41, we only own at a 41% home ownership rate. They had a 71.9% home ownership rate. So we have 60% of our people, of our families, don't own their own home and our renters. They only have 18% uh, of white families are renters. So we got to think about how we conduct ourselves business-wise, how we spend with each other financially, and how, what we do with our money because it's hurting us badly. We see who else is against us. Uh, <clears throat> now, let's look at this uh, Lift Every Voice, the Biden plan for black America. Read some of this out to you. Joe Biden known that, knows that African Americans can never have a fair shot at the American dream so long as entrenched disparities are allowed to quietly chip away at opportunities. He is running for president to rebuild our economy in a way that finally brings everyone along. And that starts by root, by rooting out systematic racism from, from our laws, our policies, our institutions, and our hearts. As you just seen, due to uh, the accumulation of the civil rights laws, that in itself did not root out uh, racism or did not stop uh, the hindrance of uh, black people from progressing. Uh, a lot of it is on us, lack of supporting each other's. His mission is more important now than ever before. As the health and economic impact of COVID-19 has shined a light on and cruel and cruel exhibited and disparities long faced by African Americans in April 2020, Biden called on the Center for Disease Control and Prevention to collect more data regarding how COVID-19 is affecting communities, including breaking down its impact by race. The data we've seen so far suggests that African Americans are dying from COVID-19 at a higher rate than whites. Long-standing systematic inequalities are contributing to the disparities, including the fact that African Americans are more likely to be uninsured and to live in communities where they are exposed to high level of air pollutions after African Americans also represent an especially high percentage of the frontline workers putting themselves at greater risk to sustain the economy and keep the, re the rest of the country safe and fed and and are less likely to have a job they can do from home, forcing them to make the difficult choice between their health and a paycheck. While there's lots we don't know, yet know about COVID-19, we do know that inequality in, in distribution of resources like testing and medical equipment can make a difference in fighting the virus. Biden believes this should be a priority and action must be taken now. COVID-19 is also having a disparate, disparate economic impact on African Americans' families. African American small businesses have been hit hard and over 90% of African American owned businesses are estimated to be shut out of the institutional initial relief program due to pre-existing systematic disparities in lending. This is especially dire given that African-American families have less of a financial cushion to fall back on. It is hard times. Biden has been called for the nation relief and recovery efforts to be equitable and just include by designing relief programs in ways that avoid methods we know lead to disparate outcomes so that funds can actually reach African-American families, communities, and small businesses. 
President Trump has not heeded his warnings. If Biden were president today, we would make it a top priority to ensure that African Americans, workers, families, and small businesses got the relief they need and deserve. Now, remember he said that because I want us to understand what politics. When he get in office, he got the Democrats running Congress. They got majority in Congress, and they got majority in the Senate, and you got Kamala Harris to break a tie. So we got him in office. Expect him to deliver on what he say. I don't, but A, I'm, I'm saying we need to hold his feet to the fire and, and make him stand on what he say. Tackling systematic racism and fighting for civil rights has been a driving force throughout Biden's career in public services. This is not true. That is a lie out the gate. Biden was one of the chief pushers of the crime bill. So understand he is a racist who is using black people to get in power and to maintain power. So we need to understand who we're dealing with and how we deal with him is according to that. So uh, he has a record of fighting for and delivering for the African-American community as a, as a U.S. senator. He co-sponsored the Civil Rights Act of 1990 to protect against unemployment, discrimination, and led multiple reauthorization of the Voting Rights Act, protecting African-American rights to vote. Biden also led efforts to reauthorize and extend the Fair Housing Act and a De as a Delaware senator was a vocal advocate and supporter of Delaware State University and state historically black universities. Now, let me explain something. Now, the Fair Housing Act, all that, yeah, all that stuff. First of all, the government got us in a lot of the situation when they started redlining, which was they was insuring certain properties and they insured the black communities. They insured, they didn't insure the black communities and they didn't insure white communities that had black people live in those communities. So this also helped create the stereotype that if blacks come in your community, your property value go down. This was financially enforced by the government. So that's another reason why they owe us reparations too. So uh, today we need comprehensive agenda for African Americans with ambition that matches the scale of the challenge and with recognition that race neutral policies are not a sufficient response to race-based disparities. Now that's significant. A race neutral policies are not a significant response to race bias disparities. You have to be active to the disparities that we've been facing as black people. So I can agree with that line. You have to be, it has to be more proactive. It can't be just a uh, 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 subtle, we're going to stop doing it. No, that don't work that way. You owe us from the years, the centuries and centuries of holding us back. The Biden plan for Black America will advocate advance the economic mo mobility of African Americans and close the racial wealth and income gap, expand access to higher quality education, and tackle racial inequalities in our education system. We got to hold them to the fire for this. Hold them to the fire for this. Make far-reaching investments in ending health disparities by race. Strengthen America's Commitment to justice. Make the right to vote and the right to equal protection real for African Americans address environmental injustice. See, the equal protection under the law process never been affected, never been applied to us. That's the 11th Amendment. That's never been applied. I've used it in court plenty of times, but it doesn't apply to us. So that's an effective, that's something powerful, that's something. I need, we need to highlight because we need to be on them. We need to be on that. Okay. Uh, addressing environmental injustice. Okay. Advance the economic mobility of African Americans and close the racial wealth gap, wealth and income gap. 
invest in African American business and entrepreneurs. Approximately 4% of small business owners are African Americans, even though African Americans make up approximately 13% of the population. To build wealth in African American communities, we must invest in the success of African American businesses and entrepreneurs. How can somebody else say that, but black people, y'all don't understand the significance in investing in your own people, buying black, investing in your cousins, brothers, sisters, dream, and y'all building companies together. How, this, this is in a government document. I don't understand when you're living the life, you can't comprehend that. Self-hate, you don't want to see your own people come up. You don't want to see your own people progress. That's what that is. It's showing equal access to credit and capital. African-American business often lack the capital they need to succeed. African-American businesses are rejected at a rate nearly 20% higher than the white-owned firms. Even worse, African-Americans businesses that do get funding receive only 40% of the funds requested as compared to 70% for white businesses to increase investment and access to capital. You understand what it's saying. If I go to a business and I say, I need for the six business I'm in, and I go to them and I say, I need 13.14,000 for a truckload of laundry detergent so I can buy the laundry detergent at this price and get it and sell it at this price. And they tell me, no, we're going to give you 40% of the price of the money. We're going to loan you 40% of it. And they loan the white guy the full of the 70% or the full amount. And he goes and get the whole truckload. He's able to sell the products cheaper than me because he bought it a large volume or a larger volume than me. I just need us to understand the significance and what they've been doing to us and how they've been holding us back for so long and how we've been participating in it as well. Okay. Double funding for the, for the state small business credit initiative, the Obama Biden administration created the state small business credit initiative, SBCI, to support small businesses, driving ten billion in new lending for each one billion in SSBCI funds. Biden will extend the program through twenty twenty five and double. Its federal funding to three billion, driving close to thirty billion of private sector investment to small businesses. All told, especially those owned by women and people of color. This is where they get us at. That women and people of color. They list white women as a minority group. That's who benefited majority from all the front of action was white women. So I'm gonna get back to this tomorrow and pick up at um expanding the new markets, tax credit market makes the program permanent and double community development financial institution, the CDFI funding. So we're gonna get into that.